Shalom to Prince Kadash. I want to give our praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rekha Kadash, which play the U.S. veterans volunteering in um, Ukraine. Look at an elite group of American veterans, some former special forces, medics now operating near the front lines. Our cameras with them as they prepare for a top secret mission. ABC's foreign correspondent James Longman is in Ukraine. Tonight, an elite group of U.S. veterans take us inside a life-saving mission in Ukraine. Dark Horse is a group of former U.S. Special Operations personnel. They include Special Forces and Navy SEALs, and they're here in Ukraine to provide expert medical support. So this is the operational command center in the bunker under the house. Everything here can be stripped out at a moment's notice if they need to get out quickly. And the intelligence they're discussing here has been fed to them by Ukrainians. Then they're off, heading out towards the front line. Back at base, a colleague monitors the mission and waits for news. You get to that, um, like that expectant father mode, you know, like that, that stereotypical, like the guy pacing in the waiting room, waiting for the doctor to come out and tell you what's going on. And the worst part is, you know something's going on, and you're here and you feel helpless. And Ukraine seems to have given this veteran some meaning. Old oh, habits die hard. Just about everyone I knew in the veteran community had a mental breakdown when, you know, Afghanistan fell. Um, and then seeing this one, everybody just wanted to do something good. Around seven hours later, the others get back from their mission, setting up a mini field hospital. How did it go? Good, good, good. So this one is saying that the experts are um, providing medical support near the front lines. Let me see. I think I had another one on this front screen. And then my name's one. Kyle Stumpenhorst, and I'm the owner of RR Buildings. Before I even make my first cut on site, I make sure that I've got. This is the same training. Welcome, Welcome back to our coverage from Lviv, Ukraine. Ukraine. You can hear air raid sirens are going off in the middle of the night here. This is the at least the fourth time we've heard air raid sirens uh, on this day alone. For the past few days, I have spent time with some American veterans of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Three Americans who have come here on their own dime. Wanting to help train volunteers so that they can fight alongside the city. You see on their own dime. These Edomites, right? They can't help it. They can't help it, so they're going to have to get involved with, you know, with, it's Edomite on Edomite crime. But they're going to have to get involved with Ukraine because they can't help it. Now, the man on the front line, like they said, they ready to go. They've been ready to go, right? Because that's their spirit. That's Esau's spirit. War, fighting, right? But it's their superiors, you know, their leaders and stuff that is afraid because they know the outcome. They know the outcome that it's, it's going to be a lot of death, right? But the, um, what else I want to say? The man on the front line, like these veterans is going over there. It's just in them. It's in them to seek after that. This is Ezekiel 35 that kind of break it down. It says, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man. Set thy face against Mount Sire and prophesy against it. So we're also out there to prophesy against these other nations too. Wake up the elect, prophesy against the nations. It says, and say unto it, thus saith the Lord God, behold, O Mount Sire, I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. I will lay the city's waste, and um, thou shalt become a, des a desolate. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord. And this is also prophesied in the book of Malachi chapter 1. Because thou has had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel. Same thing in Jeremiah 49. Same thing in Isaiah um, 34. It says, because thou has had in Obadiah 1, right? So we could get all those precepts, but I'll just rather quote them, not to make this too long. You know, it says, because thou has had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of the calamity in the time that their iniquity had an end. So when you put this together, right, with Deuteronomy 28, us going into slavery and captivity, you put it together with Daniel chapter 9, us having the worst slavery on earth, and then you put this together, Ezekiel 35, with it, that the Edomites shed our blood and had that perpetual hatred, then what, do, what does that look like today? What does that look like in real life? It looks like the transatlantic slave trade. And then that's why you're going to have Obadiah chapter 1 because of that. It says, therefore, as I live, say the Lord God, I will prepare thee into blood and blood shall pursue thee. And since thou has, uh, and since thou has um, not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. I will, um, thus will I make Mount Sire most desolate and cut off 
from it him that passes out of him that return and going back to these american veterans right that's just a part of them pursuing that blood man they can't stay away from it you know they are like the vampires right they can't stay away from it they pursuing that blood so so what's going to happen is if the lord said he's going to make them desolate and how he, he's going to make them desolate we already we well we know in revelation chapter 17 the nations are going to shoot fire on it why because they're going to get in they're going to get involved in this war, which is going to turn to World War III, you know, which really has already started, right? And that's going to cause them to be made desolate. And they can't help it but to get involved in it, you know? And that's that's what I'm giving you the example of. Now, when you do go to um the Book of Obadiah, let's find it. Right here, verse 10, straight to the point. Right, it says, For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame should cover thee, and thou should be cut off forever. Right, so it's the same thing as um, Ezekiel chapter um, 35 just summed up pretty much. The defense force, if and when Lviv is attacked. In Lviv, men who've never fought now train for war. Practice clearing rooms in a stack formation, using hand signals to move in silence. It's a two-week crash course in combat, the bare essentials to stay alive. So it looked really great. Yeah, as always, just getting clear in that doorway, right? Matt Gallagher served in Iraq. I mean, that's just Esau pursuing blood. They know it's not much that three men. You know, I mean, going up against the Russians, you know, that's really trained. And then they always do like these, um, these fake battles where they could kind of train and see the outcome and they always lose. That's been the thing with America. They always been losing. So it's not much you could do. Even if these three men enter the war themselves, it's not like they would be, they would probably, if they actually went in the front lines to fight against Russia, they'd probably be dead in a week. So what does all this training do? You know, but that's just Esau's spirit. You know what I mean? They gonna fight. You know, and and they even gonna fight against the Lord. They gonna have the spirit on them to fight even against the Lord, man. And they going and the same. It's gonna be the same outcome. They gonna be fucking destroyed. Adrian Bonnenberger did two tours in Afghanistan. Both American Army vets who come here to help. One first, on the back. Exactly. Sorry. Exactly right. You guys look good. Okay, thanks. Think about where you were two weeks ago. Outside, Ben Bush prepares another group of volunteers. He served two tours in Iraq as a Marine. There's a suspected patrol in the area of one or two people. We're not sure. And that's how proud Esau is, especially this devil that's in America. You know, they think that they just, well, well, I, I get them. I get them that, you know, they this, this is their kingdom, you know, and they were blessed with the sword. So I give them that. So they, they just feel like they superior. Like if we would have entered the war, but the great thing about it is, is we gonna get to find out. We gonna we gonna actually get to see how they get down, cause they gonna they gonna be dragged into the war and they gonna have to go over there and get down versus uh, China, versus the Russians. They gonna actually have to go fight. So we actually gonna get to see that. So we gonna see how big and bad they is, right? <laughs> Ben, Matt, and Adrian are not working for the U.S. military or government. They're not being paid by anyone. Yeah, but they, they just put an image out there, you know, and maybe if this video get out, more Americans likewise, like them, may actually go join it themselves too. And then you might have a thousand, two, three thousand American soldiers over there, and they train in the Ukraine um, army, and they did it on their own dime, you know? This is um, Matthews 24, of course, right? Very popular precept, you should know it, or chapter, you should know it. Verse 5, for many should come in my name, saying I am a Mashiach, and should deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And that's why when we hearing all this, we like, man, they every time I hear about this shit, and or they might take Kiev and all that, it's good knowledge right it's good and you get to be a watchman i get that but i always be like man they don't bullshit they scared well what's taking so long 
They Russia should have have the whole Ukraine occupied by now. What's taking so long? They pussies. But then you always remember that everything is a set time. So they don't really have control on what they're doing. Really, the Lord is controlling it. The angels are like refereeing the war. And then at the same time, everything is strategic. So they have to. So I think they're just using Ukraine really to test and stuff like that. You know, but the real war is definitely going to be when America gets involved, you know, so they're just posturing, right, to see what will America allow, how much is it going to take for America or NATO to get involved, you know, so it's all strategic battles, you know, so we're going to see, you know, you got North Korea that possibly waiting for the, waiting pretty much for China to get them the um, green light to go ahead and bomb South Korea, I mean, and then you got China and ta Taiwan, so there's a lot that's going on. They're saying that maybe China is going to evade Taiwan by the end of the year. That's possible. But usually when they say that uh, by the end of the year, it's probably going to be in the middle of the year next year sometime, you know. So, but we shall see, you know. Um, verse 7, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. And that's what you're seeing. Like the more that this war goes on. Then the more are shortages, right? Because when the fuel shortage came and the fuel prices went up, they blamed that on um, the, the war in Russia and Ukraine. You know, the pesticists, you know, China and America had a a, a very big um, um, trade war, you know, because of, you know, the whole thing. We didn't speak on it. Um, earthquakes in diverse places, you're going to have that natural and you're going to have that when these um different um, nukes um, start to go off. Because they're talking about Russia is possibly considering using nukes. Yo, low yield nukes, nukes right? Low radiation, low yield um, nukes. But they're still powerful because they could hit like a um, uh, very, um, they're very accurate. You know, stuff like that. You know, so we're going to see. You know, you're going to see, you know, you just got to keep the faith. Things is happening. With that, I'm going to say salvation to you. Shalom.